Hi, and welcome to Japan Today Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeff Richards. It's been 14 years since the Great East Japan earthquake triggered a tsunami that left more than 18,500 people dead or missing and caused a nuclear meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant on March 11th, 2011. Since then, much of the tsunami devastated area has been rebuilt. But the nuclear disaster left a lasting impact on Japan, one that continues to shape the lives of its people and the country's future. Let's take a look at where things stand today, what's been accomplished, what challenges remain, and what Japan's energy future might look like. Who is to blame for the nuclear disaster? No one, apparently. On March 6th, Japan's Supreme Court finalized the acquittal of two former vice presidents of Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, the operator of the Fukushima plant. Ichiro Takekuro and Sakai Muto were charged with professional negligence over the 2011 meltdown. They were accused of liability for the deaths of more than 40 hospitalized patients who had to be evacuated from the disaster zone. A third executive, former TEPCO chairman Tsunehisa Katsumata, faced the same charges, but he passed away last year. Courts ruled that the men could not have predicted the scale of the tsunami that struck the plant. In 2019, the Tokyo District Court ruled in favor of the executives. In 2023, the Tokyo High Court upheld the ruling. And in 2025, the Supreme Court finalized their acquittal. That was just in the first week of March. With this last and final ruling, not a single person has been held criminally responsible for the nuclear disaster. How is the nuclear plant cleanup going? The two biggest challenges at Fukushima Daiichi, the massive amounts of contaminated soil from the surrounding area, the disposal of treated radioactive water, which has sparked diplomatic tensions with China and South Korea. In February, Rafael Grossi, head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, visited the plant to monitor progress. The decommissioning process is expected to take decades, and the most dangerous task is still ahead, removing 880 tons of highly radioactive molten fuel debris from inside the reactors. Grossi's visit, coincidentally, came a day after the Japanese government approved an energy plan that marks a return to nuclear power. Let's get back to the contaminated soil. Picture this, if you can. Around 14 million cubic meters of soil and 300,000 cubic meters of ash from incinerated organic material, that's enough to fill 10 sports stadiums, was removed from the land surrounding the plant to reduce the radiation exposure. Today, black bags full of this tainted soil are stored at an interim facility near Fukushima. The plan? To recycle roughly 75% of the soil, the portion with the lowest radioactivity, for building projects such as road and railway embankments. To dispose of the remaining 25% outside the Fukushima region ahead of a 2045 deadline. There's a problem. No prefecture wants to take it despite government subsidies being offered to potential host sites. What are they doing with the water? In 2023, TEPCO began releasing 1.3 million tons of water into the Pacific Ocean. This includes groundwater, seawater, and rainwater that entered the plant and water used for reactor cooling. TEPCO had no space left to store it in tanks. And how is it treated? The water is processed using Advanced Liquid Processing System, ALPS, 
to remove most radioactive elements except tritium, a relatively low risk isotope. It's then diluted to 1 40th of the concentration allowed under Japanese safety standards before it's discharged. Despite IAEA approval, some countries, including China, South Korea, and Russia, have criticized the move and banned Japanese seafood imports. However, there may be a breakthrough. In February, China itself collected Japanese fish samples for the first time in an effort to review its import ban. Japanese seafood remains hugely popular in China and Hong Kong, creating economic pressure to resolve this dispute. After the 2011 disaster, all 33 nuclear plants in Japan went offline. Currently though, 14 are back in service. Lawsuits have been filed to prevent restarts in several prefectures. However, Japanese courts have largely ruled in favor of the plant operators. Why the opposition? Critics argue that nuclear plants remain vulnerable due to the proximity to the sea, making them susceptible to tsunamis and being located near active faults or volcanoes, plus the aging reactors. Several of them exceed their 40 year operational limit. Despite these concerns, Japan's nuclear energy comeback is accelerating. Now, coming back to Japan's planned use of nuclear energy. In February, Japan approved a new energy policy that reverses the nuclear phase out planned after 311. It stated some key goals to achieve by 2040. Renewables will supply 50% of the country's electricity and nuclear power will supply 20% up from 8.5% in 2024. Why is nuclear energy back on the table? The demand for low carbon energy is rising due to AI data centers and semiconductor factories driving huge electricity consumption. And of course, the need to reduce reliance on fossil fuels in general. What's next? More reactors will restart provided they meet post-Fukushima safety standards. New generation reactors are planned at sites with aging nuclear infrastructure. Before he left Japan, IAEA Chief Grossi said, as Japan gradually returns to nuclear energy, it's important that this is done with complete safety and public confidence. But does Japan trust in its nuclear future? With the ever-present risk of earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons, volcanic eruptions, accidents, and even terrorism, public skepticism remains high. So, 14 years after the events of March 11th, 2011, Japan is still dealing with the consequences and the fallout of one of the worst natural disasters in modern history. The cleanup in Fukushima is far from over. What to do with the stadium sized amounts of contaminated soil remains unresolved. The nuclear energy debate is back and in a big way and opposition is strong. With nuclear power returning and playing a growing role in Japan's future energy needs, the key question is no longer just about safety. It's about trust, transparency, and public acceptance. How will Japan balance energy demands, safety concerns, and public skepticism as it moves forward with its nuclear power ambitions? And after everything we've witnessed since March 11th, 2011, where does Japan really stand on nuclear energy today. That's all for this edition of Japan Today Spotlight. Thanks for watching and please share your thoughts. See you next time.